What's going on everybody? My name is Caleb and this is part two to a video I recently did which was beginner mistakes in C++. This video we're going to talk about three more pitfalls you can make if you're learning C++ or maybe intermediate C++ or big one here if you are coming from another language to C++. So one of the first big mistakes is using too much C inside of C++. A lot of people think of C and C++ as these things that go together which is to a degree true, but C++ is a different language, and just because it supports different things coming from C doesn't mean you should be using those things. There's almost always a better way to do it in C++. One big example of this is the use of malloc, which you should never do in C++, but you will occasionally see it in C++ code. Unless there is some specific weird scenario where you have to integrate with some C code, or something like that, then you shouldn't be using these C features and you should be using the C++ equivalent. In the case of memory, with C++, you have the ability to use the new keyword. And then when you're done, you just say delete. This is typically done if you need to return some new object from a function call. There's no requirement to pass in the size of the memory allocated. There's even ways to make it easier in C++. This is a very common setup, so you'll probably see this. But we're going to talk about later in this video a better way you can do this. Other examples of this similar problem using things from C is using standard C style arrays, which I believe you should understand how they work. And if you have some simple data that you know exactly how many elements there are, then it will probably work. But you should at least know of the standard namespace array, which works very similar to the default C style array. It's statically sized, but it has a few more additional features. And then there is also vectors, which is a dynamic array, so you don't have to worry about memory management at all. It abstracts away all of it. Another example is C style casts, which C++ has its own variations on casting. Another example is the overuse of null instead of null pointer, which is just a macro defined. So in C++ you have null pointer, so that's going to look like null pointer. Yet another one is the overuse of structs. If you're coming from C, you've probably used structs for any custom data structure. In C++ you should basically default to using classes unless you have a very simple type. It's very easy to start with a struct because that's what you're familiar with and then add all this object oriented programming capabilities but really you should be working with a class just for the general understanding of how classes work. If you see struct you might get confused that this might be some really simple data type when in reality it's pretty complex and it should be defined as a class. The next problem is the overuse of pointers, which is super common in C, instead of using references when you can, which is a new thing introduced in C++. So definitely choose references when possible, and that is my next big mistake, the use of pointers over references. To prefix this, references have some limitations. First, they can't be null, they must be initialized immediately, and they cannot be changed to reference some other variable. You can think of a reference as just an alias. The primary benefit of using a reference is it saves memory, passing data to a function, for example, or returning data from a function. And the other thing is it'll allow a function to change data that will persist outside of that function. So here's some simple code that uses pointers to swap two variables. We have an int x being 5, y being 10. We pass the addresses to this swap function. And afterwards, x is 10 and y is 5. This works, and it's not really like the end of the world if you do this, but this is a perfect scenario where you should prefer references. The same code using references will look like this. It looks very similar, but there are a few major differences. The first is the way we define the parameters in the function. We don't have to use the asterisk or dereference anything. And when we pass that data, we just use x and y. We don't pass the address. So the code is a lot simpler here, but we get the same result. So if we should prefer references in this scenario, when should we use pointers? Well, a common scenario is you have a function where you create some new data and you want to return a pointer to that data and you want it to survive beyond the scope of that function. So you create that data on the heap or with dynamic memory. We saw this at the beginning with the use of new. So if you're in that specific scenario where you need to create new data in a function and have it exist outside of that function, 
that's when you need to use pointers. Which brings up my third pitfall, which is something you should be aware of. It's not going to be the end of the world if you don't do this, but it's recommended. And that is to use too many raw pointers instead of smart pointers. Here's an example where we create a class and then we have a function which creates an instance of that class here. But we're using this make unique function, which is an alternative to using the new keyword. And then we can assign this to a unique pointer. This is a smart pointer and will automatically manage the memory so I don't have to worry about freeing it later. So we don't have to invoke delete down here at the bottom. This should be your preferred way to use pointers if you understand how smart pointers work. If you're constantly using pointers and you have just have tons of raw pointers floating around in your code, it's probably worth learning how smart pointers work to save yourself some headache. Additionally, you don't have to worry about memory leaks because they're going to intelligently delete that memory for you. Once you have that pointer, you work with it essentially the same way. So here's an example where we access a data member on that object. These are just some potential pitfalls and most of these aren't going to completely break your code. This isn't going to make your code incorrect, but by following the strategies talked about in this video, you're going to have better code and more C++ native code as opposed to C code inside of a C++ program. So hopefully these tips were helpful and definitely stay tuned for upcoming C and C++ content as well as a lot of other cool stuff. I just recently released a video on creating a game in C++ with the help of ChatGPT. So definitely check that out if that sounds interesting. I also have an upcoming C and C++ master course. So if that's something you're interested in, I will leave a link to the newsletter to be notified when that comes out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.